in the middle of that prayer, the people put their arms around one another's shoulders. I had never seen this kind of affection shown before. And when it was over, I went to Joel and I said, Joel, what did it mean when the people put their arms around one another's shoulders? And Joel was so moved, he had tears in his eyes and he said, Marilyn, Marilyn, do you know what that means when someone puts their arm around someone's shoulder? It means that they're forgetting all the wrongs that they have ever committed towards one another and they never remember them anymore. And I said, Joel, that's our word for forgiveness. Jesus has come that he might put his arms around our shoulders and never remember anymore the sins that we've committed. We found our word for forgiveness. The joy and the excitement was so high as the scriptures became so meaningful in their services. The leadership just started to develop and people started to sing and to pray to Jesus in their own language. They have now written over 200 scripture songs. Hi, you're welcome. Daddy here, who is one of the teachers, and he's also the chief's youngest son, a real leader, he loves to preach, and he's one of the most dramatic of the eight preachers in our village. And he's saying, I asked Jesus to come into my throat. I'm a different person now. And he's challenging the people to ask Jesus to come into their throats and to follow God's road. These colorful panels on their new church were painted by some of the judges. It took them six months to do those paintings. These people have become missionaries themselves. They're reaching out to other people from other villages and telling them about Jesus and baptizing them. One day I was walking through the village and I came to Nokian's house. Now Nokian is one of the oldest men in the village. He's considered to be the father of us all. And he started to ask me some very difficult questions. And he said to me, Marilyn, look at me. I'm an old man and my skin is wrinkled. My eyes are poor and my fingers have arthritis. I've been watching you as you walk through the village with your banana leaf carving my talk. My father and many of my relatives died many years ago. They knew nothing about God, and for me, it's too late. I'm too old to learn to read my own talk. And he asked me, he said, Did you know a long time ago when you were a little girl that there were people here in Papua New Guinea like myself? Did you know that? And I said, Yes, I, I've read books. I knew about Papua New Guinea. And then he said to me, he said, well, Marilyn, why did it take you so long to come? I was so broken, and so inwardly I cried out, Lord, Lord, don't let others wait like this man has waited. One day after the service, a man from a distant village came up to me and he said, could you come to my village and put our talk in the banana leaf too so that we can know about God also? Well, I had to tell him I couldn't come because my work here was not finished, and so I asked him where he lived, and he pointed over those mountains somewhere, and so I promised him that we would try and visit his village someday. Well, after several days had passed, we organized a party. The Christians of the village would not let me forget that we had made this promise. They were so burdened about the people and their needs, and so we started upriver. 
and we passed many villages, each one a different language. Languages that have never been written. In New Guinea, there are 700 different languages and 3,000 languages around the world, unwritten. People who have never heard about Jesus. Translating the Bible into all the languages of the world is not Wakeliffe's problem. It's the responsibility of the church and every Christian. Wakeliffe is one tool through which the Bible is being translated by ordinary people. After all day on the river, we found the village. There it was, tucked away in the mountains. The people were so excited that we had kept our promise. We were the first white people to ever come into the village. As I was talking with the people, I noticed a new building in the center of the village, different from the other buildings. And I asked the leader, I said, what is that building there? And he said, well, that's God's house. And I said, God's house? I said, do you have a mission here? And he said, oh, no, we've never had a mission. And I said, well, do you have a pastor? And he said, oh, no, we don't have anyone to tell us about God. But we know that someone is going to come by here and live in our village someday and tell us about God. And we want to be ready. And so we're waiting. And I thought to myself, waiting and I couldn't hold back the tears and I just cried Lord Lord what can I do what can I do I see village after village filled with people who do not know you oh Lord please touch the hearts of those at home touch their hearts Lord there are so many just waiting waiting for someone to come by here Thank you.